Chapter 14, Introduction to Linear Regression and Correlation Analysis. In this video, we'll learn about the applications of regression analysis, as well as confidence intervals and the potential problems of using regression analysis. The two common uses for regression analysis is description and prediction. With description, we analyze the relationship between the x and y variables, or the independent and dependent variables, as measured by the regression slope coefficient. With prediction, we can use regression analysis to predict what the value of our dependent y variable will be when we know what the independent x variable is. To help describe the relationship between our independent and dependent variables, we need to develop a confidence interval estimate for the regression slope. We learned how to do confidence interval estimates in chapter 8. So this should look familiar in that our B1, which is the estimate of the regression slope, is our point estimate. We have our plus or minus. Our T critical value can be found using Appendix F or Excel. And we need to know that the degrees of freedom for our critical T value in, when doing regression analysis is N minus 2. And then our SB1, which we learned about in section 14.2, is the standard error, also known as the standard deviation of our regression slope coefficient. So let's go ahead and do problem 33 in the textbook. Again, I'm using the specific numbers from the text, but your numbers will look slightly different in my stat lab. So you'll go ahead and use the Excel file I provided and look for the tab that says question 33. It's regarding data collected by Dwight, who is performing an audit of paper products at Dunder Mifflin Paper. The dependent variable y is the time in minutes that Dwight takes to count the reams of paper. The independent variable x is the number of reams on the computer inventory record. So here we're actually going to go through uh, creating a scatter plot and a regression equation, as well as testing for significance, both of which you've already done uh, in section 14.2. So really, it's just practice. The new piece is part C, where we'll develop a 90% confidence interval estimate to describe what's going on. In this case, we want to know if Dwight takes an extra minute to count each additional ream of paper. Perhaps he takes longer, perhaps he takes less. Let's see. So going to Excel, we'll go ahead and create our scatter plot by highlighting our data, going to Insert, finding the option in the charts where it says Scatter, clicking on that, and now we have our scatter plot. And we can see looking at this, we have a positive linear relationship, potentially, where as our number of reams increases, so does the time it takes to count them. Now in part B, we need to run the regression analysis. So recall our formula when we're testing the significance of our regression slope states that in the null, there is no linear relationship. That's what the zero implies. There's no slope. And in our alternative, when it says it's not equal to zero, that means that there is a linear relationship. So to run the regression analysis, you'll go to data, data analysis, find the option regression in our analysis tools, click OK, and then note, carefully read what the input asks for. The first input is the Y range. So you want to make sure that you select the Y data from our problem. Clicking on the box, this will take us out and allow us to highlight our data. And again, I always like to highlight the label so that when my data runs, all the labels are included in the tables. Clicking on the box or hitting return takes us back to our menu. And now we want to input the X range. So clicking on our box, making sure I select X and all of the data values within the X variable. Go ahead and hit return. And then uh, because I included the labels, I'll check labels. And then for our confidence level, recall that in the problem, it asks for a significance level or alpha of 0 0.10. But the way the menu asks for it is set up as the confidence level. So the confidence level and the alpha or significance levels are complements of each other. So because our significance level was 0 0.10, that means our confidence level is 90% or 0 0.90. And then for my output range, I'm going to go ahead and keep it on the same page by clicking on the output option and then choosing a blank area 
to have it populate. So you just have to select one cell and that's where it'll start from. I'll go ahead and click OK. And so our regression is run. Now recall I like to round my data so it's easier to read. So I'll use the um, decimal places here to move it out to the four digits. Same thing over here. And then the last table down here. Now note we actually only need the third table here in our summary output for our analysis. So going back to the slides, here's our third table of data where we're taking our intercept and our x or our slope and the coefficients, standard error, t, stat, and p values. So for our regression equation, we're going to go ahead and use the coefficients from our table and plug that in where we'll first take our intercept of 6.258 and then add our slope of 0.925 with our x variable at the end. Now for our decision rule, since we're using the p-value approach, recall that our p-value rule states that if my p-value is smaller than my alpha value, we reject the null. So looking at our p-value here in the table, we can see it's very small. Our p-value of 0, 0.0000 is smaller than my alpha. So we'll go ahead and reject the null. And so when I reject the null, that means our alternative holds true. And when I interpret what my alternative says, it says that there is a linear relationship. Thus, we can conclude that the number of reams is linear related to the time it takes for Dwight to count them. So for part C, we'll go ahead and do the 90% confidence interval. Here's our formula, we will, where we will take our slope plus or minus the critical t value times our standard error. Two out of the three parts of this formula was found in our regression analysis using Excel. So here's our data from Excel. And then to get our critical t value, we will also use Excel. And then so our degrees of freedom for this confidence interval estimate is n minus 2. So if we looked at our Excel data, we can see that the number of observations was 11. That's our sample size. Or if you wanted to, you can count how many um, data points we have here. In this case, there are 11 data points for our x and y variables. So our degrees of freedom is 9. And then we'll go ahead and use Excel to type in equals t.inv.2t and then putting in our alpha of 0.1 and our degrees of freedom of 9, we should get a critical t value of 1.8331. Now we'll go ahead and plug in all our pieces into the formula for our regression slope of 0.9249 plus or minus, here's our critical t value we found in Excel, and then our standard error of our slope is within the standard error column to the right of our slope coefficient of 0 0.0722. So again, I recommend multiplying the this right side of our formula first and then subtracting it from our point estimate and adding it to our point estimate to get the lower and upper confidence limits. Thus, our confidence interval estimate is between 0.7925 and 1.0573. So in part C, we're asked to see if it really does take Dwight one minute to count each additional ream. In other words, we're going to examine our 90% confidence interval and see if it contains the hypothesized value of one minute, because that's what we're interested in. So looking at our confidence interval estimate, we can see that yes, the hypothesized value of one minute is in between our 0.7925 and 1.0573 confidence interval estimate. So in other words, we can conclude that Dwight takes an additional minute to count each additional ream of paper. You might have noticed that in our regression analysis in the output, our lower and upper confidence limits are actually given to us here in the table because we had set it at 90%. So we have our data right here. So this is where it's important that we understand where the numbers come from and how they're calculated but also note that we can read the table to get us this information as well. One of the main uses of regression analysis is prediction. We may want to predict the dependent variable based on our independent variable. 
The first formula here is our confidence interval. This helps us predict the average value in the form of an interval estimate. With the prediction interval, this helps us predict a specific instance or individual value. One way I like to remember this is that the number one right here in my formula is because I'm going to try to predict one instance. For example, I may want to find the confidence interval for the average salary Maricosta College graduates make after graduation. I'm taking the average for the group, so I would use this formula here. However, if I wanted to predict a single person or graduate, a specific person, I would use the prediction interval instead. Note that Excel gives us the simple linear regression, but not the predicted variable. So while we can find the confidence interval through Excel, you have to use Excel stat add-ins to get our predictions. So we're actually not going to be working with prediction intervals for that reason, uh, but it's helpful to understand the relationship between the two and what they mean. So visually, if we look at this blue line here, that's our regression equation for a particular set of data. Our confidence interval, where I'm trying to find the average of something, so in like my example with the uh, Maricosta College graduate salaries, the confidence interval or the average would be between the yellow lines here. So we can see our confidence interval is quite small and close to our regression equation. So it gives us a window in which our average salary is somewhere in between here and along the uh, regression equation line. Now, because when I'm trying to predict the salary for a particular individual, a single person, my prediction interval gets much wider. So if we look at the green lines here, we can see that now I'm saying that the, the predicted salary for a particular person is somewhere between this um, interval estimate. The interval is much wider because it's much harder to predict for a single person based on our data. So in the textbook, it gives an example of hospital administrators wanting to predict the total hospital bill based on knowing the patient's length of stay in the hospital. Data were collected for 138 patients and the following regression output was produced by Excel. So here, using our coefficients, we can create our regression equation right here in that our intercept is 527.61 and our slope related to the length of stay is 1,352.80. Uh, and we'll multiply that by our x, which in this case is the number of days people stay. So our independent variable is the days uh, that a patient stays in the hospital. And our y variable, our dependent variable that we wish to understand, is the total hospital bill. If we were to plot this particular scenario, we can see that by looking at the length of stay, or the number of days a patient is in the hospital, we can see that our total bill increases. Our data here is plotted and we can uh, identify the regression equation that best fits the data. So let's go ahead and use our regression equation to predict. Note that the relevant range for our x variable uh, for our 138 patients that we use for our date from our data set was between 1 to 16 days. So using our regression equation, we'll go ahead and use that to predict the average cost for patients who stay five days. So what we do is we take our regression equation and plug in our five in our x variable. And then solving for this, our predicted value is $7,291.61. This is the value for our average. If we were to create the prediction interval using Excel stat for one patient, our interval would be somewhere between $1,545.01 and $13,038.16. We can see that our prediction interval here is very wide and it's not really useful. And so that's why uh, we want to be careful when applying prediction intervals for a particular value or instance. And same thing, if the hospital wanted to know the average cost for a stay of nine days, we would take our formula and plug in nine where our x is and that would give us $12,702.81. Uh, to wrap up our discussion on the regression analysis, I do want to highlight some of the common problems that occur. 
the first issue to be aware of is that, that the conclusions and inferences made about a regression line are only applicable to the range of data contained in the sample used. So for instance, in our hospital example, we were looking at hospital stays between 1 and 16 days. So we cannot apply our regression line to someone staying at the hospital for 30 days, for instance, because it's not within our uh, sample used. Secondly, we have to remember that correlation does not imply causation, and that just because there's a relationship in the data, it does not mean there's a cause and effect relationship, and we'll look at an example shortly. Another thing to note is that our R squared, or the coefficient of determination that we are using to try to explain the variation in our data, only applies to the sample data that we're looking at. It's important to understand that correlation, while it talks about the relationship between two variables, you, it does not imply cause and effect. For instance, Tyler Vegan analyzes public data sets to find correlations that illustrate that it's not cause and effect. So here's an example of where we see how much mozzarella cheese is consumed correlates with the number of civil engineering doctorates awarded. Mr. Vegan took this data and compared it and while the data shows that there is a relationship, we can also use logic to recognize that these two variables are completely unrelated, and yet the data tells us there's a correlation. So we have to recognize that while statistics may give us some information about relationship between variables, we need more analyses and better judgment, like logic, to really understand what's going on. So if you have any questions, just let me know.